This is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to rise to any challenge. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Canine Companions for Independence has exclusively fed Yukonuba to their puppies in training for over 15 years. Yukonuba provides animal proteins and high levels of DHA for a strong body and mind. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. the UKC Premier, the annual event featuring thousands of dogs representing over 150 different breeds and all looking to win top honors at UKC's most prestigious event. Featuring all of UKC's all-breed sports, Premier showcases the philosophy of the Total Dog. The Total Dog has the beauty necessary for the traditional show ring and also the ability to perform the functions for which its breed was originally created. To earn a coveted Total Dog Award, dogs must place in a confirmation and performance event during the weekend of Premier. UKC Premier is regarded by many as a benchmark event for dogs enthusiasts seeking to compete among the best in the world. Dogs and handlers compete all year long to qualify for the top 10 and All-Stars Invitational competitions held at Premier. Be sure to follow along during Premiere for updates and tag us with pictures of your total dog. I do weight pull, uh, lure coursing, drag racing, and confirmation. I'm so excited to be here at Premiere. <laughs> yeah. It's great to be at Premiere. I, my dog is getting ready to retire. She got second today and I'm over the moon for her. And it's a great time. Look at all this. People everywhere, lots of dogs, it's just nice. Yeah, it was worth a long trip, about 1,400 miles. This is a silken windhound. We do lure coursing and agility. Two grand champions, one emerald grand champion and a champion. But this is my first time coming at Premier, and so far it's been absolutely amazing. These guys are the Caucasian off Charka. Um, he's going to be doing performance and uh, confirmation events tomorrow, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, he does dock diving, nose work, shed hunting weight pool and obedience so super excited to be here this year we're just we're just dock diving today though hi everyone welcome to ukc premier national we are so glad to finally be here in person my name is nicole sedlecki and i am here with the all breed sports director hannah trey hannah Tell us about Premier Nationals. Absolutely. So the Premier Nationals is our annual show. It's held every year in June right here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. At our Premier Nationals, we offer every one of our all-breed sports from drag racing to nose work to weight pull to confirmation. So it's a really busy event. I love Premier and today is a very special day because it is our invitational day where we have our top 10 and all-stars invitational. How do you get into all-stars? Absolutely. So to qualify for All-Stars in obedience, rally obedience, or agility, you need to qualify the year prior to Premier. So we have standings lists throughout the year, and as long as you make that standings list, you are invited and can compete for um, top honors in your sport. And then we have our Top 10 Invitational, which dogs that are in the top 10 of their breed or their group get invited to participate in our Top 10. Yes. Tonight, at 5.30, we'll be having our top 10 finals, correct? 
Absolutely, we will. And also our top junior finals as well. So we'll be picking a um, top 10 dog and top 10 uh, junior handler for um, 2019 and 2020 this year. All right, so if you want to come back here at 5.30, we will be live for UKC top 10 finals and top juniors. And until then, let's watch some obedience and pay attention to our novice obedience class with Karen Shivers. Welcome to UKC Obedience. We are pleased to offer new opportunities for exhibitors to enjoy obedience from the very beginning to more advanced and complex levels. We would like to give a special thanks to Susan Knowles for allowing us to use her beautiful facility, for volunteering with her dog Johnny, and for acting as a judge as well. We would also like to thank Colton Caraway and Josie, Ellie Armands with Macy and Checkers, and Madison Davis and Gage for volunteering with their help with their dogs and as stewards. You will also see a few appearances with me and my dog Magnum. This new program was introduced in 2021. The general rules that relate to obedience have not changed very much, but we will be highlighting some of those changes as we go along. The first change is the new additional titling classes. These consist of pre-novice, beginner novice, advanced novice, advanced open, master, and elite. Holding the elite class will be optional as it requires a larger ring size and can also be held as a standalone event. These classes do not require any prerequisites to enter, such as our novice open and utility class where you have to have a novice title to enter open and an open title to enter utility. You can enter these classes, the additional licensed classes, at any time you wish that you feel your dog is ready. There are also no A or B divisions for these classes. None of the new additional titling classes will be eligible for high and trial. Ring size has changed. The ring requirement for all classes is 40 by 50, except for the elite class and one of our non-licensed classes. That ring has to be 40 by 70. As well as our additional licensed classes, we also offer non-licensed classes that clubs may hold. They are not required to hold these classes, they are optional. Those classes are Veteran, Brace, Team, Pairs, Versatility, and Precision Healing. For the new classes, clubs will be required to have some additional new equipment. For the Pre-Novice and Beginner-Novice class, and also the Master class, they will be required to have pylons, poles, or cones, one of which needs to be at least 18 inches tall. They will also need to have a send-away box for the advanced open class. The box consists of a box that looks similar to the agility pause box. Directions on how to make that box are listed in the rule book. A stopwatch will be required for the master and elite class. Scent cloths will be required from the club and the judge. And scent boxes will be required for the master and elite classes as well. There will be a food distraction in the elite class Requirements for what type of food that can be offered are found in the rule book. There will also be some new equipment required by the exhibitor in some of the new classes. Retrieve of an object requires the exhibitor to have some type of a retrieve object that is safe for the dog. Personal scent items will also be required in the master class. Two dumbbells will be required in some of the advanced classes. They must be identical in size and shape. All of these regulations will be listed in the rule book. If you have any questions about our obedience program, please do not hesitate to contact us. And as always, make sure you have fun and work together as a team with your dog. Thank you for watching UKC's YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Welcome to UKC Obedience. This is the beginner novice class. It is one of our additional titling classes. Um, praise and encouragement are allowed in this class with specific restrictions. And any dog that has not earned a UCDX or its equivalent may enter this class. The handler is required to have a six foot leash for this class. Normally for this class, the judge would show the exhibitor the healing pattern as it is an entry level class. So if our judge right would here. show the healing pattern. Forward, fast, Normal, left turn, 
halt, forward, about turn, slow, normal, right turn, halt, right here for your figure eights. Okay. In this class, the L pattern is the only acceptable pattern. The normal orders for the heel unleash exercise will apply. Are you ready? Ready. Forward. Let's go. Fast. Normal. Left turn. Halt. Forward. Let's go. About turn. Slow. Normal. Right turn, halt. The handler can give a maximum of two exercise. verbal praises and one extra command okay. without penalty during the healing exercise. Right over here for your figure eight. They may also do that for the figure eight portion. Okay, you may, this is the figure eight. You may go in either direction. Are you ready? Ready. Forward. Halt. Forward. Let's go. Halt. Exercise finished. Okay, right over here, facing that direction. This is your sit or stand for exam. Are you ready? Sit or stand and leave your dog. Sit, stay. Back to your dog. Exercise finished. Okay, right over here. This will be the down, stay, walk away. The handler has to perform a T pattern. Okay, are you ready? Ready. Down your dog. Leave your dog. The handler can give an extra command to stay on the return and they should walk a normal pace Exercise during this. Exercise finished. Okay. Right over here. The next exercise is the recall over the high jump. Can get the leash. A steward will come and get the leash and will put it in a designated spot for the next exercise after this one. Okay. So recall over the high. Are you ready? Ready. Leave your dog. Stay. The handler has chosen to do a minimum jump height on this dog. They can choose a minimum or standard Exercise jump height. Finished. Very good. They can also use their hands to guide the dog in on the front. There is no finish right in this here. class. Okay. This is your sit, stay, get your leash. Are you ready? Ready. Leave your dog and get your leash. Stay. Exercise finished. That concludes the beginner Please novice class. Shana. Handlers need three qualifying scores of a score of 170 or better and at least 50% of each exercise to get the beginner novice title. The BN initials will go to the beginning of the dog's registered name. I hope you enjoyed watching our novice obedience videos with Karen Shivers. In the meantime, I'm over here at our Agility All-Stars Ring where 2019 and 2020 dogs are competing to find out who's going to be the best in the Agility All-Stars. Agility is one of our oldest UKC uh, all-breed sports. It is a sport where dogs and handlers work together to navigate a unique obstacle course and they want to do it in the fastest time and with the most accuracy. 
it's a sport that builds on uh, the dog handler bond because without teamwork, you are destined to fail in agility. We're also getting ready for our 2019 and 2020 top junior and top 10 finals competitions. As we prepare, we have some more exciting videos about UKC rally obedience that you can watch in the meantime, again with Karen Shivers. Welcome to UKC Rally Obedience. We are pleased to offer four levels of rally from beginning to higher advanced master. We have classes from Rally 1, Rally 2, Rally 3, and our ROM, which is our master class. We're very excited to offer you these classes. Here are some tips to remember when you're performing rally. Be sure to read the sign, be sure to perform the sign as it reads, and have fun with your dog. We have color-coded the signs to help in your performance. Red indicates a halt. Dark green line or arrow indicates the handler or handler movement. A light green line or arrow indicates movement from the dog only. Orange shapes indicate a position the dog must take and will be a specific shape. A triangle that is orange means a sit. An irregular pentagon that is orange is a down. An orange rectangle is a stand. A blue X line or arrow designates movement or a position or a place for the handler. Handlers can choose either standard or minimum jump heights for their dogs in levels three and master. Always read the signs carefully and do not be afraid to ask the judge for clarification on the performance of any station during the walkthrough. If you have any questions about our rally program, please do not hesitate to contact us. And as always, make sure you have fun and work together as a team with your dog. This is sign 101, halt. This is sign 102, halt, stand. This is sign 103, halt, down. Perfect. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed that Rally Obedience video with Karen Shivers. Rally Obedience is a great introduction to UKC dog sports. Um, so you don't miss any upcoming videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and go ahead and visit that page to see other similar content. Um, in the meantime, we're going to join Nicole Sedlecki, our Director of Major Events, as we're getting ready for our 2021 Top 10 and Top Junior Finals. top 10 finals where today you will see the breeds who are representing the top 10 of their breed or group for the 2019 and 2020 season. The dogs today have competed in their breed and went on to the semifinals where they were selected to be the top 20 for this special finals invitation tonight. 
judging will be the wonderful Tim Katerson, Heidi Schuff, and Jennifer Landers. So we hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Thank you. top 10 the final round our three judges are in the ring and I think you've been told they are Jennifer Landers Tim Catterson and Heidi Schuff most of those judges have been judges for quite some time I've known Tim oh. cat Tim I've known Tim Catterson for quite some time <laughs> there goes the Great Dane So we don't have to talk now. This just means they're truly dogs when they're having fun. And these can be real clowns. At this point, the judges are getting a look at each dog, and then they will come in individually to be judged.
junior final. This is junior final. Mm -hmm. What is this? All right, that was all 20 dogs that got their first go around. They will now come in the ring and they will be judged one at a time. That was quite a lineup of our finalists. The finals that, that have competed have been from 2019 and 2020. Due to COVID, those that qualified in 2019 were invited back to compete with the 2020 dogs. Looks like up first is the Great Dane. The call name of this dog is Ira. It qualified in 2019 and 2020. The dog's favorite thing to do when not showing is to eat, play, do therapy dog work, and love on his mother. Great Dane number 355. What will happen now is the judges will individually go over the dog and they're comparing it to their breed standard. What's important in this breed or hallmark quality is for the head type to be a brick on a brick. It's a very square breed. Good angles, nice strong rear. This breed calls for full dentition, so it must have a scissors bite and full dentition on either side. Each judge is going to evaluate the dog and then they will, by silent vote, mark, and turn those scores in and that's how the dogs will be evaluated. And they are all calculated at the end and they will be awarded one through 10. This is the Apollo of all breeds. <clears throat> Hence the name Great Dane. And our judges today are Jennifer Landers, Tim Catterson, and Heidi Schaff. Jennifer is the current judge that is going over the dog now. So he's doing his down and back, looking for proper gait. Nice clean front and rear. This is Great Dane, number 355. The dog's being asked to stand on its own. Now each judge is going to fill in and mark according to how they feel that that dog meets the breed standard. And there are 20 different breeds. And he's our Alaskan Malamute, Ruby Grand Champion, Wildwood Wingler.
Ruby signifies a certain level of winds. So this is the Alaskan Malamute 1093. Call name is Henry. Henry was a number one Alaskan Malamute in 2019 and 2020. When Henry is not showing, he loves to run alongside a golf cart and ride in it with his dad and play with his mom. You notice the ear size and shape of this dog. And you know why they aren't huge, harmongous ears? And why is that? Because they would freeze in the cold winters in the Arctic. They curl up in little balls as they go to sleep, so it keeps them from frostbiting. She just moved him around to set him back up again. For the next judge. Nice working dogs. They were used to pull sleds, pull equipment. Nice working dog. You can see the massive power this dog mm -hmm. has. And so walking back in to be examined again because some of the dogs are just used to being examined one at a time by one judge. Now they have three. They pretty much know that they're ready to move down and back after one judge. Each breed has their own written standard and that's what they are being judged against. They are not judged against each other dog. The handler is being instructed what to do by the judge. And again, Very nice. looking for the profile silhouette of that, of that breed. The majority of these breeds, you should be able to tell what breed it is just by silhouette alone. This dog was used as a guard dog to guard flocks. Many people today have this breed and they have other breeds, toy breeds, so they protect them against coyotes and prey like that. I don't have a call name for this dog. I am very sure that this dog loves to be outside and run and run and run. <laughs> Absolutely. Nice thick double coat. This breed has two dew claws on the rear. People say that those dew claws are used as snowshoes to keep them from sinking in the snow. As a judge goes over the dog, they go down the leg, rear legs, and they must feel for the dew claws. Another Palmer quality of that breed.
There he goes. Oh. You can actually see the double dew claws. Right. And again, the Great Pyrenees will be asked to go around the ring and set itself up. And how the top 10 works is that you compete against your own breed all year long and you accumulate points by every dog that you beat. So the top 10 in every breed are invited back every year to compete for overall best of breed. Then they must make it through a semi-final round to get to the final round. This is German Shepherd Dog 267. Call name is Chata. <laughs> I like this one. It says, what's your dog's favorite thing to do and not showing? Chasing the ge geese off my lawn, <laughs> swimming, and he jumps the fence when mom disappears. Tim Catterson is the judge going over the German Shepherd Dog now. He started off with IG's Brussels Griffon and has Rottweilers and he has been judging and well he has been in dogs for 56 years. Miss Jennifer Landers, her breed is a Welsh Springer Spaniel and she's been in dogs for 46 years. And our third judge who is in the red is Heidi Chef. Her main breed is AEs and she has TFTs and she's been in the in dogs for 22 years herself. AEs being American Eskimos. Yes, I'm sorry about that. TFTs being Toy Fox there Terriers. For those people that don't have dogs. That is correct. So an IEG would be an Italian Greyhound. The breed standard calls for full dentition and a scissors bite. That's why you see the judge ask for sides and front. Beautiful expression on this little girl. She sees something. I love it when everybody claps. I think our dogs show better. They feel the energy. Yep.
very focused on her mother. Very pretty picture. Tail carried in a low saber-like fashion. Mr. Catterson was waiting for the next dog to come in, and he, he, he needed to go back and score. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was focused Sometimes on his job. Sometimes you're so intense out there. That's right. Both of us being judges, we've both been there. Let's welcome back the American Bulldog. United Rally Excellent, United Rally Obedience Champion, Novice Pistol and Horsing, United Companion Dog, United Novice Jumper, Novice Vehicle, Rally Obedience Master, and World Grand Champion. PRHD's Zen Full Segment, spot on. That's a lot of titles. So all those titles are um, rally obedience. There is an, um, agility, there is weight pull in there, there is dock jumping in there, um, and nose work, along with a spot on, which is basically the, a good temperament dog. They are it, tested for their temperament. And you could see how the applause just cranks this dog up. They can be real clowns. Very intense. And this is a young male. I believe this dog is also a service dog. Yes, he is. Whom I don't think has ever seen cameras before. Mm. <laughs> And he could just feel this. That he's very sensitive to being a service dog, to the, the electricity that, that's going on at this show right now. And there is a different energy, even from his owner, when you're in this setting. At this level. Yep. What a face. I just love that patch over his eye. And again, most of these dogs are used to being, just used to having one judge go over them and then they start to move. They know what their routines are and how they're trained. And he loves feeding off the energy. Look at the tail. <laughs> Typical young dog. He's like, how many times? <laughs> there he goes. By the way, this dog's call name is Ziggy. And what he likes to do when he's not showing is he loves to ride in the sidecar of his mom's motorcycle. I've actually seen this dog in that sidecar in that motorcycle and he does truly love it. She has goggles for the dog and a helmet. And again, they are judging against their breed standard. And they do take into consideration age of dog, the energy in the room. They are all dogs first. He's very aware of what's in his ring. <laughs> There he 
he goes. He's like, okay, I'm done. Let's go, Mom. <laughs> and the tail keeps going. Yep. He's probably a dog that you could take outside and let him run for five miles and still come in and act like a puppy. This is Golden Retriever 425. His call name is Archie. Um, he placed number seven in the top 10. And what Archie likes to do when not showing is Archie enjoys being an avid counter surfer. <laughs> so don't leave food on the table. He enjoys watching movies with his family and protecting his yard from the birds. What the handler is doing is putting bait or some kind of treat in front of the dog's face to get the dog to be alert. Ears up, kind of that little twinkle in the eye. Called expression. And most dogs have their favorite treats, summer cheese, and chicken, and liver. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. String cheese. I had one who loved hamburgers. <laughs> and you want to use some kind of bait that's going to entice the dog, but not be messy and sloppy. So that's why people use hot dogs and string cheese. And there are some that are toy driven, so they have squeakies or a balls. And she will be doing the same thing on the go around and let the dog set itself up. Nice. Golden Retriever is a very popular breed. And it's got a nice, smooth, even gait. Nice, short loin, strong. Good rib cage to carry the heart and lung. There's a lot of adrenaline from the owner to the dog. United Nautilus Jumper, champion, country size, the perfect fit. Here's a dog that people always associate with fire, fire, fire trucks and fire departments because they were a coach dog and they, they were bred to, to guard not only the coach and the horses and the stable, it was a multi-purpose dog that way. Did you know when, this, when these dogs are born, they're born all white? All white. 
and as they age, they, as puppyhood, their spots develop. They could be black or liver. liver. Never black or liver together, always separate. That's an intense look. Very intense. With a little bit of drool. With a little bit of drool. <laughs> Most of these dogs were, were bred and made up of different dogs. And uh, different breeds made up these breeds. And that's the other thing that the judges are looking for too. They are looking to do, can the dog do what it was bred to do? Even if they still don't have that function today, they should still be able to do the function that were bred Correct. to do. Correct. This is one of the most fun times I've ever had at a show. It's participating in top 10. And this looks like it's a liver Dalmatian. Oh, and I forgot to say, this is Levi. And what Levi likes to do when he's not shown is as Levi loves to play ball and swim and he enjoy, enjoys long walks to the pond. They move well together. People don't realize that this dog is a gun dog, so it's more or less a sporting dog, hence the clip on this dog. What does the clip do? Protects joints when the dog has to go into cold water to retrieve fowl. And you had to put your hands on that dog to be able to feel the shoulders and to feel the fort chest underneath all that coat. The common colors are usually white or black, but there is brown. Um, red, red, silver, silver. Yeah, I, apricot, I yeah. all those shades. And this is a solid white standard poodle. <laughs> and I don't have a sheet for this dog's call name, so I can't tell you what his call name is. <laughs> A very square breed, you want a square dog. In UKC, the registry, uh, they 
want to stay away from foreign substances so you don't see the top knot on top of his head all sprayed up and poofed like you do in other registries. By foreign product, there's no hairspray, there's no um, stiffening shampoos, whiteners, chalk. Actually, the handlers aren't even allowed to bring any of the grooming equipment, like combs and brushes, like they do in correct. other our registries, into the, the dog show ring with them. talk about this dog is they just said it was altered. Normally your dogs are intact, but since we combined the 2019 and the 2020 top 10, this dog was altered after the 2019 showing season. And this is a breed that you don't see often, a Carillion Bear dog. from the northern group. Very focused on mom. <laughs> and I believe they said she was diamond, which means she's accumulated so many points to take her to that category and that level. It's funny, I keep looking at the monitor and I see the handler keep showing bites on dogs and I keep forgetting, oh wait, three judges three have judges. to see that. This is not a young dog either. No, I and believe she's, she's five, maybe I six. No, no, she's there. Very sound. This handler works very hard to keep her in tone, keep her fit, keep her in shape, good condition. Very nice. Very focused on what mom has for her. <laughs> the English Springer Spaniel, Ruby Grand Champion, Crown Royal, TGIF. Oh. No cute name. TGIF. <laughs> this is a bred. This is a, a breed that I bred, actually. So TGIF call name is obviously Friday. That's cute. She was on um, the number one English Springer Spaniel in 2020, and by the looks of what her mom wrote, it looks like number one in 2020 for the Gun Dog Group. And Friday likes to run laps in the front yard and be a couch princess. <laughs> Not a couch potato, a but couch a couch princess. This is a liver in white. They come in black and white. They also come in tries.
Friday wants to see what's going on. She puts the ear over the eye, that way the judge can see the length of neck. Friday's from the gun dog group. The Field Spaniel, Diamond Grand Champion, Hilara, A Dark and Stormy Night. This is another Spaniel from the Gundog group. Each Spaniel was bred to do a specific job in the quote-unquote field. This dog comes in two colors as well, black and liver. She's doing the same thing with the ears, both over, over the eyes, that way you can see the length of neck, neck shape. And a lot of dogs with ears, like the spaniels, when they hang down, it actually covers the neck so the judge can't see from the side, so then since the handlers will pick up the ear. And I think we said earlier that each judge is judging each dog against its individual breed standard. There's a written standard. By the parent club. <laughs> Jennifer came from Spaniels, actually the Welsh Springer Spaniel. Uh, the Welsh Springer. Look at that tail go. Very typical of a spaniel.
Pacific Pit Bull Terrier. United White Polar, United Rally Obedience One, Ruby Grand Champion, Charay's Diamonds Are Forever. Here's your breed, Sue. This is my breed. This is American Pit Bull Terrier number 117. His call name is Cash, and his owner said he likes to he likes his ball and being a couch potato, but I think he's pretty fit to be not a potato. And this young lady, his owner, is also in the top 10 juniors finals as well. So we'll see her back. This breed can have cropped or uncropped ears. You want that nice wedge head, a scissors bite, full dentition. They are very much their owner's dogs. They are so people friendly. I think that's a misconception with the American Pit Bull Terrier. Any dog can be mean. This is not a dog that's mean. They're very loyal to their family, very loving. I've seen them with kids. I have pictures of mine being read to by my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> she would use them for a pillow. I think we both watched this junior grow up. Mm -hmm. Her mom used to show dogs all the time, and you barely see her mom in the ring now because her daughter does such a lovely job. I would always go, good luck, brat. <laughs> that is my loving nickname for her. And she has trained this dog on her own as well. And that's why they make such a good team. Very nice. This is the Staffy Bull. And this is a dog that truly loves its people. A it lot would... of power in a little package. And basically wants to be a part of you. <laughs> this is Trucky, and he finished second in the top 10, and he loves swimming and playing. Playing with Rybacks. Must be another dog. I'm thinking it's another dog. I kind of like that call name, I mean that registered name, Pickup Man. <laughs> It's amazing the different categories that people use for um, their registered names, anywhere from songs to after your kennel to sunsets to everything. Just food, coffee brands. I've seen those before, a whole litter named after coffees. And watch the owner each time she starts with a new, ha ha uh, new judge, she's giving the dog a hand signal to stay. 
Well, she didn't do it there. These dogs were bred to bait the bulls back in the day. So they should be fit, turn on a dime. Hence the small package. There's a lot of, lot of power in that small package. Very athletic. Conquer Spaniel, Emerald Grand Champion, Rich Evans, Kid Coker. I do believe this is the first table breed we've seen tonight. Yes. And this is an English collar, a cogger, and the color is a blue realm. This is another one of our spaniel breeds. From the gun dog group. Again, there goes the ear to show that length of neck. Judges feeling rib cage and front quarters. And this um, owner takes the, the full collar off that when she presents the dog, it gives a full silhouette without any interference from her lead. This breed come this breed come comes in solid colors as well.
The tail wags and the whole hindquarter goes yep. with it. <laughs> It means they love what they're doing. The American Eskimo, Emerald Grand Champion, PR, Milk Talks, All Eyes on Me. This is an Arctic Spitz breed. One of the hallmark qualities of this dog is it's imperative that they single track. So when you stand behind the dog, the dog will single track. And by single track, we mean front replaces each other along with the back replaces each other. So it looks like one line going down the ring. Without crossing. Without crossing. and they want that eye line, the lip liner, that dark pigment around the eyes and mouth. A breed that has to have full dentition as well. Double coat to keep it warm. And it has that traditional spitz curl of the tail. Nice almond shaped eye. Good dark eye rims. <clears throat> and it's interesting that Miss Chef has AEs. So you wonder how, you know, I find it, you are, you critique your own breed a little bit more. Because that is what you know. <clears throat> You look for specific characters, characteristics in that dog. Beautiful pigment on the mouth. Mm -hmm. This breed comes in two varieties in UKC. Miniature and standard. I love it when they walk into a freeze deck nice and square. And again, note the small size ears so it doesn't get frostbite. I didn't have a call name for the last couple of dogs. We didn't have a sheet for them. The Poodle, Grand Champion, Mary, Small Town Sun. This is, this variety is the Toy Poodle. the same thing as that we did with the standard, that it doesn't have the product in it to give it that high top night and, and sprayed hair. I believe it's the same pattern as the standard poodle was. Even though it's sized down to the toy, it's still supposed to be a square breed.
And I believe this is a pretty young dog. I think it's only about 18 months old. We have a lot of our top 10 dogs that do more than just confirmation. That's what all those letters and numbers mean before and after their dogs, their initials. UKC offers such a wide variety of working dog titles. And that's what I like about UKC uh, compared to other registries. Not only is it a pretty face, but it's a pretty workable face. And they perform the job that they were bred to do. Hence the total dog. And at Premier, it's the one event where every working event that they offer is here this weekend. And if anybody that is watching or listening, if you want to know more about UKC, it's at ukcdogs.com, and everything is on there. From registering your dog to shows. To applying for a job. That too. <laughs> the Chinese question. Known as Steeple Chase Aptitude, Known as Flat Aptitude, Grand Champion, or in Deviva, Jumpin' Little Juke Joint. <laughs> Jumpin' Little Juke Joint. I like that. And this dog is call name is Coco. It was a number four Chinese crested. And the dog's favorite thing to do when not, showing, when not showing is Fast Cat, which is another performance event. This is the puff. The puff me being the hair, all the hair. The hairless is another variety of this breed, but it is a variety because they both come from the same litter. You can have a litter full of puffs and Hairless. And the hairless will still technically have some hair. Correct. On its ears and on its feet, legs. And the puff must have full dentition. Good scissors bite, nice straight, aligned teeth. Whereas the hairless, well, just so they have some teeth in them. Just mouth. so they have some teeth. <laughs> and it says it can be misaligned. Dog's in beautiful condition. The puff also has to have a double coat, whereas the cresteds have a single coat. She was making sure that all the hairs were laid back down so when the dog moves, you can see how it's free and easy as going. I personally am a wash and wear kind of girl. <laughs> I like my short coats. You give them a bath, you dry them off, 
trim some whiskers, and in the ring we go. <laughs> and the crested, uh, the, the uh, hairless, always resemble a little pony to me with their hair flying back and... There, yeah, I can see that. I love to see the tail wag on a free stack. Dog's happy and it's giving everything it can to its owner. Here's a popular breed that we see very often. And this dog comes in two sizes and two coats. Hence the variety. This dog's call name is Jack. And Jack, when not showing, likes to herd the goats on the farm with his border collie friends. Three. Actually, three, three different yes, coats. Three. We have a smooth. Mm -hmm. This looks like this could be a wire. This is the wire, yep. And then we have a long and hair. And then we have a long hair, yep. I always mis misspoke on that one. That's why I'm here. I love that. So Ooh. there's a mini and a standard. This is a mini. We're here to keep each other in check. <laughs> Somebody has to, right? Well, absolutely. <laughs> This breed, sometimes it's not a law, it's not a wire or it's, or size-wise, it's not a, a mini or a standard. They call them tweenies, and I just love that. Tweenies. Tweenies. Because they're in between. One of their hallmark qualities is to have a really good keel. So a keel like in a boat, it's got good four chest, and then the judge feels underneath to feel where that brisket goes. She and it just did it. And yep. all the way back by the rib. A tweeny. I saw this dog outside. There it goes. It was just a fun little dog. It loved what it was doing outside. <laughs> Lovely wrap around front on this dog. Growing up, I had some friends that had a wiener dog, and we always call him Oscar Meyer, Oscar Meyer, because you always think the Oscar Meyer wieners. Absolutely, <laughs> and they used to nickname them. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Makes me want to sing that song, but I will not do that. <laughs> These dogs were bred to go in brown, in brown after badgers, so they can be tough. This is a little companion breed. Papillon, because of the ears, uh, meaning uh, butterfly in, in French. 
Do you know what the drop beard other version of the Papillon is? That would be is? a Feline. Feline, correct. Both are totally acceptable. There you can see what they call the butterfly ear because it fans out the feathers. On and hair. it resembles a butterfly. This dog, when it's not showing, loves adding to his stick collection. I'm thinking he likes to chase sticks in the yard. And then it says being a thief <laughs> and playing with his sister. And unfortunately, we can't read the call name. It could be, is it Bendix? Or is it, I'm not sure. So forgive us. Looks like she's using a little greeny as a as bait. And I do believe we have one dog after this, and that will complete the 20. And then once that last dog is done, UKC tabulates all of the votes the, from the judges. All the points, yes. It is a greeny stick. It looks like it. It is. This is a high energy dog. I used to show them. Note, the judge is giving each one of those exhibitors the same directions, so they all do the same thing. No favoritism. dog in front of his name has a national best of breed winner and a national grand champion. It has a parent club and it was one of the original breeds to UKC. The three original breeds to the United Kennel Club were the American Eskimo, the Toy Fox Terrier, and the American Pitbull Terrier. So those three have a core parent club and this dog won its national best of breed every year they gather and their judges are voted on and selected as a whole by their group and it won its grand champion class and its national best of breed on that day. It'll carry that title forever. And this dog's call name is Olivia. <laughs> and Olivia's favorite things are doing when not showing it is climbing on everything. That is a typical TFT. <laughs> And note for the size of this dog, how sturdy this dog is. And in UKC, this dog has a weight requirement. It cannot be above seven pounds. So before each event, 
or the weekend thereof, each exhibitor must weigh in and they cannot be more than seven pounds. Otherwise they can't compete. And that is in their written standard. From the parent club. <clears throat> And it is up to each exhibitor to weigh or have their dog weighed in. It's not up to the club or any kennel club to ask them to be weighed in. It's got the tan markings, the tan points. Yes. Just like in a Doberman, it has to have all the same area. Very interesting, once the dog is measured in, if it's a two-day event or a three-day event, once it's measured, uh, weighed in, it's, good for it's the whole weighed weekend. in for the whole, yes. Very nice. That's lovely. And again, it's not frail looking. Okay, that was the last of them. Now all the scores will be tabulated. And here comes the arithmetic. Please welcome in our top 10 junior finalists for 2019 and 2020, judged tonight by Heidi Shep. So what's going to happen now is our top 10 juniors will come into the ring while the top 10 confirmation points are being tabulated. Heidi will place the juniors that competed earlier in the semifinal round. She will um, place them 10 through all the way up to first place. For the start of the day, they competed by age. We have open juniors, open seniors. They all competed by age, and then when they go back in the ring, they competed against each other, and five from each ring were selected to participate in the top 10 finals. And this chef is going to judge on the handler presentation is not about the dog. It's about how they present their dog, how they care for their dog, how they handle a dog that maybe might be nervous in the ring. This is the future of our sport, so we try to promote junior handling. And I believe a couple of these juniors will also be completing, competing for total junior, which that means they, they are trying to place in junior showmanship and they are trying to place in a working event as well. But they are the handler in that working event. Working event such as? Um, there is weight pull. Some of these dogs are in um, rally obedience, also agility. We have regular obedience. There is um, dock jumping, and dock lure jumping, coursing. Dock jumping is? Dock jumping is where they take the big pool. There are two different types, and I'm probably going to say them wrong, so I won't say them at all. <laughs> but they're also, the length that they jump in the pool, they'll throw a toy out, and the handler will release them to jump after that, and so it goes by the length that they jump. There are qualifying distances for that. Rally obedience is a course of sits, downs, stays, um, come when called. There's different turns. I think I'm missing one. Oh, drag racing. But this is Junior Handler. Boy, they just gave me the dog's call name. 
<laughs> this is Ted. Pretty simple. <laughs> and Ted likes to sleep. But the young gentleman is Corbin Cunningham. And the junior noticed, noticed is trying to get his dog to stop in a four-point stack, which he did do. Or I'm sorry, a three-point stack, <clears throat> like that. The next one is a Rottweiler, and this is. I'm, Gina, if I say your name wrong, I'm very sorry. But Gina Perifo? Perfino. That sounds closer than what I said. Yes. But she is with her Rottweiler, Maggie. She finished top, top, top five in the open senior class. And what Maggie likes to do when she's not showing is play with our little cousins. So when you're looking at a junior handler, you want to make sure that the judge is looking for how well they move with the dog. Do they wait on the dog in a turn? Are they in front or behind? Are they with their dog? It's all about the presentation of that dog. And each judge is going to ask each junior, sorry, Heidi's going to ask each junior a question. It could be breed specific. It could be a general UKC knowledge. I think every judge has a standard question that they like to use. I prefer with a disqualifying fault for your breed. There are, where's your withers? Where's the octopus? Where's the, all different questions on anatomy. I think what's most important when you deal with a junior and, ask you, and you're asking questions is how that junior relates to a quote unquote adult. They don't break down, they don't go speechless. They're able to actually talk as if they're talking to their parents. Yep. You want to be natural. And most of these dogs, probably all of them, have been trained by their junior. Some people think that they have a push button dog. Well, push button dogs are trained that way. They work with them. They re interact with them. And there are many times junior judges will actually put up a junior and their dog when it's almost quarrelsome. The dog will move a foot, move a body, turn around, mm. try to sit. And we watch how the junior reacts to all that. And if they're able to cope and have the dog do what they're asking, asked to do without the junior having a blowout, they have to win. And this is Alexis Skaggs, number 682. And the dog's call name is Flick. And it says, I'm not so sure I have the right sheet. Let me look. I don't no. think I have a sheet for her. It's a multicolor. Yeah. And Heidi is asking the junior a specific question, and the junior just answered. 
I don't have one for those. It is. Oh. Yep. So this is Flick. He loves running around on the farm, chasing the cows. He loves swimming in the pond and getting dirty right after getting groomed. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> so this is Siberian Husky. So this is 948, Alona Baker with Letty. She was in, came from the Open Junior class. And she writes, my dog's favorite thing to do when not showing is just hanging out with me and getting treats. It's wonderful to see the gallery and the amount of people that are here watching uh -huh. this. The way we had it set up, we had to set it up differently because of COVID, but it's really nice to see. And this is the American Pit Bull Terrier that we had back in the ring with the junior handler. This is Ono Walker. Um, I think it was in my other sheet. Yeah. Cash is the dog's name. And he's the one that said he'd like to be a couch potato. <laughs> this dog, is, this is what I was saying about earlier. It's competed in the top 10 along with the same owner handler is competing in the top junior. If you notice, the juniors keep a nice, easy pace with their dog. They move with their dog. They don't make the dog move with them. I love how confident our juniors look when they're being asked questions and their knowledge of the dogs. for her. This is their Norwegian Buhan. This breed is becoming rather popular. If you notice, it also has a double dew claws on the rear.
is a nice little fan club. <laughs> I think this young lady also came out of the open junior class, I believe. <laughs> I love to see our junior smile. Earlier we had a springer that was liver and white. Here's one that's black and white. And this is Bob Parkhurst, Jr. He's got an English Springer, Spaniel. Call name is Ebby. Chase. Oh, chasing birds, birds and hiking is what that dog's favorite things to do I are. Bins. This young man has really grown up. I remember when he showed me uh, Brittany, and he did a marvelous job. And I actually he beat out a bunch of uh, adults. I saw him earlier. I didn't recognize him until I just heard his name. <laughs> I wonder what questions she's asking every judge or every exhibitor. Every... Next up, this is Shetland Sheepdog, 874. And it isn't a little collie, it's a total different breed. It's, this is Ashley Barron, showing Echo. <laughs> what does your dog like to do when not showing? And she writes, chases tail in both directions. <laughs> I hope <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> These are very smart dogs. People use them a lot in obedience and rally. <clears throat> they catch on very quickly and they're very quick and flashy. Echo sees something on the ground. <laughs> Looks like they finished tallying. The scores. Yep, it usually doesn't take them long.
<laughs> and this is Staffordshire Bull Terry number 538. With the junior is Claire Rice. The dog's call name is Mavis. And Claire writes on that, sleeping in the sun and tanning her belly is what Mavis likes to do when she's not showing. Earlier we had the black Staffordshire Bull Terrier. It's like Mavis wants a treat. <laughs> She's working for it. And our 10th and final dog up is the Mini American Shepherd. And the junior handler is Emmy Hawkins. And Emmy's miniature American Shepherd's call name is Duke. And Duke loves to play with, the, play with his tennis ball. A herding breed, so I bet it's a good chaser and bring her back. I love how she's smiling. If you notice, all these dogs just seem to adore their junior handler owners. So no matter what order they place in here, it's a great accomplishment because in the open senior class alone today, I believe they have 25. Yes. In just one age group. And this, this is combining both age groups. It's funny when you get to this level, these quote unquote kids slash juniors are as competitive as some of the top handlers, adult handlers. 
most of these juniors do show their own dogs in the breed ring. Against adult yes. handlers and do quite well. How do we know that? Because we recognize them. <laughs> Now, Miss Heidi Chef has to make the hard decision of placing them one through ten. They never stop showing. And this is the hardest thing to do as a judge, to go down the line and be as inconspicuous as possible, trying to <laughs> read armbands without giving away where they're being, where the junior's being placed. And in her mind, she could still be making up, making that decision because how are they paying attention to her? Are they placing themselves between the dog and her? Is the dog in the proper position? All those little nuances that you look for, because they're all good. Dogs being fidgety, handlers straightening the dogs out. And what I think she has done is walk down the ring and made like her 10th, gone back up. So she has to keep and going keep back. making yep. pace, pa passes. Looks like she's again. See on her third pass, and she's still judging the junior. How are they handling the pressure? To me, it's one of the hardest things to do because you're judging the presentation of the dog. You're not judging against a written standard. Correct, you're not really judging the, the dog. dog at all. She's still not done. Mm -hmm. And they are dogs, they're not statues, so they will have an attitude once in a while. How do you deal with it? If your dog is not feeling it today, you play with it and you get it up. <laughs> I think she knows what she wants to do, she just got to put them in the proper order so she's trying to get those armband numbers without, like you said, being inconspicuous. <laughs> Look at Heidi's concentration. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I think she's done. And when she does make her final decision, they will place them, they'll do number 10 all the way up.
I believe she's done. I believe she has made her selection. She's congratulating them on their wins within the last two years. Congratulations to all of our 2019 and 2020 top junior handlers. Beginning with the honorable mentions. I was mistaken, they do top five. Five honorable mentions. They do top five and do five honorable mentions. I was mistaken, I'm sorry about that. The junior handler, Alana Baker. <laughs> junior handler, Bob Parkhurst Jr. To be out here is yes. something. Yes. Absolutely. Way to go, brat. <laughs> and who's and left? 2020 competition years. That was really nice. Congratulations, Alexis. Great job. <laughs> and they're going to go around. can see her off camera but she's being swarmed by a friend here <laughs> who's crying and we know that friend <laughs> who's a school teacher the top 10 finalists will return to the ring in just a moment our judges are coming back tonight we have judge Aisha, judge jennifer landers and judge tim patterson congratulations what I love about UKC, it is a family event. Absolutely. We know so many people and we've had such great friends all over the years. They're partners. 
ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. I bet you they'd really like me to tell them who won. I'm sure they would. <laughs> and if the price is right, oops, <laughs> our boss is behind us. So they've already been judged. Um, they're just setting them up to show off their dogs. Congratulations. They're not being judged any farther, but they want to present the best picture that they can. And here we go. <clears throat> Tonight in 10th place, we have the Golden Retriever Champion. This is such a great honor to be in this ring, and any placement that you get is just fantastic. And remember, this is the judges judging the dog yep. against their, written, their standard. written breed standard. very, very surprised. But that attitude is what you want to see. And they were judging against his written standard. Nothing is given in this business. And Polly is active in all facets of the sport. In eighth place, the Corellian Bear Dog, Dark Shadows. And this dog was altered. I don't think we, I don't know if we talked about that earlier, but it's, um, it was altered after it sh received its top 10 for 2019. So it was it still able to compete. In 2020. Or 2021. Yep. <laughs> in seventh place tonight, the Papillon, out in the great big world. Right. And she's still showing that dog right Nice even gate right up to the end. In sixth place, the Dalmatian countryside. tail go as happy as can be <laughs> I don't know who's happier the dog or the, I know. Or the handler oh, no. in fourth place 
the Toy Fox Terrier. In third place, the Alaskan Malamute. In second place for the 2019 and 2020 top 10 finals is the Chinese Crested. And I do believe you're going to hear some screams here in just a moment. And the 2019 and 2020 best and top 10 winner is the American Pitbull Terrier. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Also a junior. So this dog has worked really hard today for its owner, very hard. And still wagging his tail. And I got to say it again, congratulations, Brat. <laughs> Nice job, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very lovely job. And that concludes our 2021 Premier Nationals Top 10 and Top Juniors Finals. Thank you so much for watching and tune in to the UKC YouTube channel for more content from Premier Nationals. Thank you again. They're partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You activate the power that sits ready and waiting inside every fiber of muscle. You fill every lap.